Hello. Today I've got a little bit different of a video for you. I'm going to be talking about tools and tools that I've used and tools that I think might be helpful to you. So let's uh, let's get into this. But first, I do want to disclaim that the links that I have below and some of the products that I'm going to talk about, I do get a little bit of kickback from Amazon. So the links that are below are Amazon affiliate links. So hey, I need to pay the bills for this channel. So anyways, but that's not what's motivating this. It's around that season for Christmas shopping too. Okay, let's get into it. Over the last month or so, I have been doing this project. We've been building this Axia system. And Axia is a, it's from Tello Systems. It's an audio over IP audio system. And what we've been using has been this older analog based, uh, TDM based, but analog audio uh, switching router. And it's fairly limited and you have to use punch blocks. And anyways, with Axia, I can do a whole lot more with uh, Pathfinder included in that. This isn't an advertisement for them. But anyways, with all that uh, that I've been doing this month, this past month, I've been really looking at the tools that I've been kind of really relying on and realized, gosh, I use the same set of tools for almost 90% of what I'm doing. So I thought I'd share them with you. This is kind of a what's in my toolbox 2023. Um, but also we're getting up to Christmas. And if you're not an engineer, maybe this is something for your engineer friend or partner that you would want to do. Um, or if it's for yourself, I don't care, no judgment. So the first thing, the first tool that I wanna to use uh, to talk about, I have found to be really, really invaluable has been my label maker. This is the Brady M210 label maker. I love this thing. I really, really like how well it works. It'll do uh, label, it'll do labels. <laughs> what a concept. No, it will do wire wrap labels. It will do wire flags. It will do your regular banner style labels, terminal blocks, patch bo uh, patch blocks, or patch bays, um, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Anyways, that's uh, this has been invaluable. And um, I have probably gone through about four or five cartridges in total with this project, just labeling cables, putting information on cables. So that way when we have to service stuff in the in the future. We know where this label is, where it's going. So documentation, I've talked about it before, very important. So the Brady M210 label maker, this is invaluable for me. The other thing that I've kept on my hip for this entire project has been uh, this little holster thing. It's um, a little old, it has seen better days, but it has held up for probably about 15 years or so. Um, but included in this is a uh, wire stripper. You put the wire in that little hole and it'll basically score the jacket of your, say, Cat6 cable because I've been doing a lot of Cat6 for this project. Run it around a few times and it just pops off that jacket so you can get into making your cable. It also has a pair of these uh, Telco scissors, and these have been really helpful for me. Trimming some of the excess wire, trimming off the Cat6 coming out of the box. Um, it includes a punch down tool, which if you're not doing 66 blocks or anything like that, you might not need. But cool thing is the tip is reversible. And now it has the tip for the keystones. So if you look at your office building or your office wall and you have your data ports there, the back side of that usually requires you to punch it down. So this tool has both tips for, for that, which I think is called 110 style and for 66 blocks. And we can talk about some of these tools and how to use them another time. But, and then the last thing that it comes with which I don't use very often, but is this little pen-like device. It's got a little plastic hook. 
If you're doing 66 blocks or anything like that, sometimes you need to manipulate a wire into the right spot or pull cut wires out. So anyways, this whole thing has lived on my hip for the last month, for the most part. Speaking of Cat6, <laughs> pass-through RJ45 connectors are a lifesaver. I know there are people that poo-poo on them, but I have in the probably 15 years or so that I've been making cables with pass-through connectors, I've had about four fail. Yes, four, four. I am not kidding. So I have had great success with these. I don't know the people who are poo-pooing these are doing. Um, maybe they're using the wrong crimper, which don't forget your boots for these. It makes them super helpful to uh, pull the cables back. But speaking of crimpers, uh, this one's made by Paladin Tools, but I like the color on the handles. Um, it's just a standard RJ45 crimp tool. I think I get it, need to get a new one. This one's kind of sticking a little bit as I'm trying to crimp, but um, it works. I have had zero failed crimps with this guy. I have had 100% failed crimps with the ones that also trim the pass-through connectors. So take that for what you will. But what I do when I build those cables is I push the pass through, or I push the cables through all the way, I trim, and then using my thumbnail, I just kind of push them back. So that way, let's say here's the end of the connector. If they're kind of sticking out, I just push them back so that way they're just like that. So, you, you know, they don't poke out and short whatever PoE device you're plugging into, but yeah, anyways. So there's that. Um, I've had to trace a lot of cables over the last month as well, trying to see if we can reuse some Cat5 cables that were run for either be it for a, a WAN connection or for audio. And my tone and probe have been invaluable for that as well. Putting this, uh, this one has the RJ45 connection on the back, so you can plug in an RJ45, tone it all the way out, find the other end. Super, super helpful. Um, you know, when you're sitting there trying to find the right cable and you are in a facility where your predecessor thought it would be a great idea to zip tie every single cable or every rung on the cable ladder all the way down on a 50 foot run. It's a pain. Pain, I tell you, a pain. But if you can just go across and just hear the sound, well, that makes it so much easier. So tone and probe, one of the, one of the things that'll be very, very helpful for you. Um, finally, uh, well, semi-finally, Velcro ties. If you're running Cat5 or Cat6, please do not use zip ties. They may be convenient. You may be able to get 10,000 of them for 50 cents or whatever. But you could be damaging those cables. You could be hindering your, your data. And because of the way the Cat5 or Cat6 work, you, those, those pairs need to be in a very specific order. So anyways, Velcro ties spreads it out, prevents you from over tightening. Uh, these are Velcro brand the uh, ties, they come in a little spool, spindle like this, just roll off, you know, and there you go. It works wonderful. And, and, and if you have to add cables or remove cables from the bundle, you just open the zip tie, pull the cable out, re-zip tie, you don't, or re-Velcro tie. You don't have to cut the zip tie and then put another zip tie on there and then trim it properly. You do trim your zip ties properly, right? You don't leave little flags on them that'll slice up your arms as you're trying to do stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. Screen cleaner is very important too. Um, a lot of our technology these days, a lot of things require human interaction, screens, 
whether it be touch sensitive screens or whatever, I've found this stuff to be gentle, but very effective. In fact, a very certain fruit, electronic fruit company uses this at their retail stores. And um, it works great. It, you know, you spray it on the rag and woo, it is shiny again. So that's that. I didn't know what cold weather was until I moved here. I thought I did, but these were really helpful. Um, they're rechargeable. USB-C rechargeable, and um, if you live in a cold weather or moving to a cold environment, there are the chemical ones, sure, but uh, these are rechargeable and better for the environment, less waste. So anyways, those are the tools that I have come to rely on for the past month, minus the hand warmers. Um, but those are the tools that I've come to rely on for the past month, and I wanted to share them with you. And if you use the links below, I get a little bit of a kickback. Again, it helps me offset the costs of this channel. There are costs. So again, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your viewership. And enjoy your Amazon Prime Big Deal Day tomorrow. It's uh, a lot of, a very good opportunity to get some Christmas shopping done. I know I will be. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I don't want to be waiting until the week before Christmas and hoping... I get it delivered in time. So anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this channel. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and watch this video because this one is what the algorithm thinks you'd like, and this is the most recent video that I've uploaded. So yeah, anyways, enjoy. And until next time, like I said, stay safe, stay healthy, keep learning.